be excited. And so today we have the lovely Daisha Savage, who is a kinesiologist by study, and she is a running enthusiast. So Daisha has been a Team Adelaide volunteer with Goder Nova um, for the past year, and she's currently a health fitness professional. And her passion is um, lies in finding innovative ways to make a healthy lifestyle, um, as well as teaching excuse me, teaching others to enjoy their journey. And I love this uh, favorite quote um, that Daisha has, optimist, someone who knows that taking a step backward after taking a step forward is not a disaster, it's a cha-cha. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> I'll hand it over to Daisha. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Nicole and the Girls on the Run Northern Virginia home team for even just inviting me to do this presentation. I think that it's an amazing opportunity. Um, so I'm very, very excited to share everything with you guys today. And I'd also like to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, so as Nicole said, my name's Daisha. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how to coach the girls through the five phases of a cardiovascular workout, which in this case is running. We're going to touch on some common injuries and prevention techniques and also some scientifically supported health benefits that align with the Girls on the Run mission. Um, so I'm also going to place a little bit of an emphasis on cueing so that in addition to learning this information, you can learn some simple cues to remind the girls how to apply all of this information. And also, although we're discussing the girls, I think it's important that we learn how this information applies to our lives so that we can adequately transfer this information to them. So my goal for today is that you all hear and learn something that you can apply to your own life. And so conveniently, the title of my presentation is Girls Ready to Run. So first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. As Nicole mentioned, I have a Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology, which is the study of human movement from George Mason University. I worked for a little while, a little over a year, as a sports chiropractic assistant where I treated and corrected sports injuries by prescribing rehabilitative exercise. And a large number of the injuries that I saw during this job were from running. So currently, I am an AFA certified group exercise instructor, and my day-to-day -day job, a uh, full-time job, is that I manage a corporate fitness facility. And in that job, I train group exercise instructors on how to safely and effectively teach participants. I also teach group exercise classes, I train clients, and I conduct health and fitness assessments. So as you can tell, this is really my passion and something that I love to do. So I've been a Team Adelaide volunteer with Girls on the Run of Northern Virginia for two seasons. And when I found this organization, I immediately fell in love with it. And that's because it kind of aligns with, one, what I do for a living, and just what I believe in. And I kind of wish there was an organization like this around when I was younger, or I lived in an area where I could be part of this organization, because I think it's so beneficial and just so needed in today's society. So my personal mission on a day-to-day -day basis in what I do is to reimagine how people view health and fitness. So I would like to disconnect aesthetics and body image to the idea of health and sort of refocus it on the many benefits of exercise. In my job, on a daily basis, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, I want to be healthier by looking a certain way. And it's unfortunate that so many people associate health with how they look because the truth about exercise is that most of the health benefits are manifested in how we feel. 
So here at the bottom of the slide, I have the Girls on the Run vision, which is to envision a world where every girl knows and activates her limitless potential and is free to boldly pursue her dreams. Since I've been a Team Adelaide volunteer and in spending time at some of your sites, I see firsthand the sense of accomplishment that a girl gets after she adds a lap or runs a little bit further in her distance. And I'm sure as coaches, you guys have all experienced that. And it's such an amazing thing. So in order to ensure that each girl continues to feel that sense of accomplishment as she progresses through longer and longer distances, it becomes imperative that we take a closer look at the mechanics and the fundamentals of what we're asking them to do, which is to run. And essentially, that is why I am here talking to you this evening. So the best way to take a look at those fundamentals is to break um, a cardiovascular workout down into the five focus areas. And those are the warm up, which is where we prepare the body and its components for or physical activity. Next, we have in the running phase, the running form with regard to posture. We also have the running form with regard to foot strike. We have breathing mechanics during the running phase. And then our final phase is the cool down. And at the end of the presentation, I hope to talk to you about some scientific, scientifically proven statistics that support the Girls on the Run vision and mission. So when we first get started, we start with a warm up. And everyone knows that warm ups are really important, but do we know why they're important? It's obviously important to prepare our bodies for running. An effective warm up increases blood flow to the muscles gradually and helps to prevent ischemia, which is a lack of oxygen to the heart muscle. An effective warm-up also improves joint range of motion and function. It loosens the joints and connective tissue, which helps to prevent strains and sprains. And then finally, it stretches the muscles through a full range of motion without overstretching. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So the best type of warm up for a cardiovascular exercise is a dynamic warm up. A dynamic warm up is a movement based warm up. It means that we're actually moving around and not just standing in one position kind of doing one thing. A dynamic warm-up increases blood flow as well as stretching the muscles at the same time. It also helps to prevent overstretching of the muscles. So when I refer to overstretching, I want you to think of a rubber band. When a rubber band gets overstretched, it sort of loses its elasticity, which means that it's no longer capable of performing the function of binding things together. So you end up having to wrap it and rewrap it and rewrap it until it breaks. So compare that rubber band to the muscles. It's essentially the same concept. Loose muscles don't contract well and they become less efficient at supporting our body weight while we're running. So a dynamic, excuse me, <clears throat> a dynamic warm up stretches the muscles only to the point of the natural range of motion. So I am going to share my screen with you and turn on my camera because I actually want to demonstrate some of these dynamic warm ups. All right, hi everyone, can you all see me okay? 
I know some of you may be muted. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. I'm just gonna try and get the screen into the right position. I had to kind of move some furniture around, so I just wanted to make sure that you can see all of me. So the first part of a dynamic warm-up can start with a step and tap. So it's essential that we start moving the big muscle groups first. Then we would go into something like an overhead reach. And one of the dynamic warm-up exercises that you had listed in your package is a side shuffle. So we'd take a slight bend in the knees and then we'd shuffle to the side, back and forth. Another really good dynamic warm-up exercise to prepare the body for running is a hamstring stretch. And one of the ones that was also in your packet was called a toy soldier. So I'm gonna turn to the side here, I'm gonna stick my hands straight out, and I'm gonna kick as I'm walking forward. Try to get in the range of the camera here. All right, and then Another one that I added that I didn't see is leg swings. This is going to be really important to activate the hips and get mobility going in the hips from front to back, as well as from side to side. All right? So a leg swing will look just like this. Standing in place and swinging. And the benefit of this motion is that you're only kicking as high as your body will allow you to kick. So focusing on not overstretching those muscles. The side to side leg swing is essentially the same thing, but you'll just be going from side to side. Same thing, not overstretching the muscles. Finally, we have a heel kick, which is pulling the heels up to meet the bottom like so. All right. Whoops. Am I still sharing my camera? Nope. But we can see your screen. Okay. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Were you able to see that demo? Yep. Okay, good. Awesome. That's what I wanted. <laughs> I'm not the most tech savvy, so I apologize for any little hiccups here and there. Oh, no worries. It was my fault because I wasn't able to get on earlier. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was a little demonstration of a full dynamic workout, of course, going from top to bottom. So once we warm up, we're now ready to get into the running phase of our workout. And one of the first considerations for the running phase is the running form. Running form is a chain reaction, meaning that if one part of the form is lacking, it'll affect the entire run, or even if a girl completes the run or not. Improper posture during a run can affect a body's ability to circulate adequate oxygen to working muscles. When muscles stop receiving oxygen, the ability to continue movement ceases and you may have heard this referred to as hitting a wall. Usually, accompanying hitting a wall is dizziness, and dizziness is always a bad sign because the next step could be loss of consciousness. We don't want that to happen at all. So 
So let's break down the running form into upper body posture and lower body posture. Proper form of the upper body in order to avoid injury is what I like to call running proud. So that means having a big chest, the chin is always parallel to the floor or higher, and the eyes are always focused forwards or straight up. We have the shoulders back and down, and the core is engaged. So a good cue for this is to pull that belly button into the spine. Then we have a nose over the toes cue. And this kind of reminds us to keep our torso upright during the entire run. And lastly, we want to visualize the road rising to meet our feet, as opposed to us slamming down into the ground. So some common upper body ailments for, from poor posture are headaches, lower back pain, and neck pain. So if you have a girl who's just completed a session, if she complains of any of these, it's, it probably means that she could have made some upper body adjustments during the course of that run. So next up, we have the running form of the lower body. And lower body posture is, is fairly simple. We want to keep the knees bent at 90 degree angles, especially as we're lifting the legs to push off, to prepare for that, that push. Landing on the midfoot and pushing off of the toes is gonna be essential. And we'll get to that in just a second. You always want the toes and hips pointed forwards. So you may have experienced some girls or just people you watch running in general kind of rotate their hips outward as they run. And this is just due to muscular imbalance of the hips. But it's always good to try and encourage the girls to keep their hips and toes pointed forward. And the way that I like to do that is by saying, keep the eyeballs on your hips looking forward. Some common lower body ailments from poor posture are shin splints, plantar fasciitis, knee and foot pain, and strained calf muscles. So if you ever hear a girl complaining about any of these, it probably means that she could have made some lower body adjustments during the course of that run. Next up during the running form is foot strike. So foot strike is gonna be very, very important, probably the most essential thing to running form. In order to have good form, you want the middle of the foot to strike, to strike the ground. So you can see this little diagram down here. A four foot strike means landing on the toes, Midfoot means landing semi-flat, and then heel strike is landing with the toes pointed upward towards the back of the foot. So landing with the feet under the body as opposed to in front of the body is essential. And then we get that nose over the toes cue. In this case, it helps the girl to realize where her foot is landing in space as she's running. If a girl is striking the ground with her heel, it indicates that the leg is stretched too far forward. If the leg is stretched too far forward, the impact of the force is on the front of the hip and the back of the knee, which can cause hyperextension of the knee joint and torn ACLs. And a fun fact, not really too fun, is according to ACSM, Girls of adolescent age are more prone to torn ACLs than boys. I recently tore both of my ACLs playing football, so I understand that this is a, a serious concern. If a girl is striking the ground with her toes, that could indicate that the torso is too far forward instead of upright. 
So we want her to come back to that upright posture. If she is leaning forward, that puts the impact of the force on the front of the knee. And if the front of the knee is covering the foot when you look down, i.e. the foot is invisible when you look down, you're at more of a risk for a tripping hazard and also other knee injuries. So next up during the running phase is proper breathing. Proper breathing is to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And when we inhale through the nose, we're breathing through the diaphragm as opposed to the chest. So you're all familiar with the diaphragm test where you put a book on your belly and you practice breathing in and out and watching that book rise. Breathing with the diaphragm helps to ensure that full lung capacity is being utilized. And this is really important because when we're not using that full lung capacity, shallow breathing shortens the breath and decreases the amount of oxygen that we're taking in to deliver to those working muscles. The more oxygen we take in in each breath, the more efficiently oxygen can be transported to the working muscles in order to sustain movement. So essentially, we want to be sucking up as much air and as much oxygen as we can in each breath. And the best way to do that is by breathing through the diaphragm. Improper breathing during running can result in decreased oxygenated blood flow. That's a huge takeaway here. So with breathing techniques, we want to work on breathing consistently. And you may say, well, Daisha, how is there even a such thing as non-consistent breathing? All we do all day is inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. And that is very true. However, when you start to run, you'll notice that breathing shifts depends, depending on how tired you're getting. So consistent breathing ensures that consistent oxygen is being delivered to the working muscles in order to sustain movement. The best way to ensure consistent breathing is to focus on timing your breathing. And the easiest way to time your breathing is by counting your steps. So I am going to inhale on my non-dominant foot I'm gonna expand the breath in my lungs for two paces, and then I'm going to exhale on my dominant foot. So for example, I'm a righty. As I run, I'm gonna inhale on my left foot, and then I'm going to expand the breath in my lungs for two paces, and exhale on my right foot. Oops. So I want to briefly share my screen with you again and turn on my camera. And I want you to practice this technique with me. So wherever you are, if you can stand up, stand up. If not, that's fine too. Let me know when you can see me. Yep, we can see can you guys see me. Okay, perfect. I think if you push, um, Share my webcam, I think you might be a little bit bigger. Ah. Perfect. There you are. <laughs> all right, so I just want to make sure you all can see my feet while I'm doing this. All right, so I want you to start marching in place wherever you're at. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. And as you're marching, I want you to start your march on your non-dominant foot. So if you're a righty, you're gonna start on your left. And we're gonna keep this pace. One, two, one, two. When I say inhale, you're gonna inhale on your non-dominant foot. We're gonna expand the breath for two paces. And then we're gonna exhale on our dominant foot. Ready? 
Here we go. Inhale. One, two, exhale. Inhale. One, two, exhale. Inhale. One, two, exhale. Inhale. One, two, exhale. Inhale. One, two. All right. So essentially, you get the idea. So you get the idea. Breathing consistently helps you maintain a steady running pace and may also help you increase your running pace. But no matter what pace you're running at, it is essential to time your breathing with your movements. And then once we're through our running phase, the next phase is the cool down. Cool down is probably the most neglected part of running, but it's extremely important to slowly and consistently decrease blood flow. When exercising, blood is steadily circulating from working muscles, from working muscles, which in this case are the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes, to the heart and lungs to pick up more oxygen and then carry it back down to those lower body muscles in order to help you continue running. So when a sudden stop in movement occurs, a sudden halt in the circulation also occurs. This means you get a sudden drop in blood pressure. That's not good because it can leave the runner extremely dizzy and lightheaded. Also, you'll get short of breath and all of this can lead to fainting. So the important takeaway here is that we move girls from the running pace to a very slow jogging pace, then to walking, and then to the stretching phase. All right, so cooling down, stretching, and processing. The processing portion of a lesson is the perfect time to stretch. And we always wanna make sure we're stretching from top to bottom in order to avoid premature forward flexion. So I'm sure if you've ever ran or jumped up and down and then tried to bend over in order to, I don't know, start stretching, you find that you get a little bit lightheaded and you get that fuzzy feeling, cloudy feeling. So I would like to share my camera one more time. Am I still sharing my camera? No, we can't see you right now. Okay. All right. So a final example of a cool down in a stretch phase during the processing portion of the lesson, lesson is a deltoid stretch. That's where we're gonna start anyway. So in order to stretch the deltoids, you're gonna pull one arm across the body, pushing that shoulder down, and then giving me a thumbs up. And you can feel free to do any of these with me while we're going through this. Then obviously you would switch arms and we go into an overhead tricep stretch. So while you may not have worked triceps, I find that it's very important to encourage flexibility by stretching from top to bottom all the way down. Next, we would go into an upper back stretch. So all you're gonna do is interlock those arms, push the palms forward, and kind of round that upper back. Then we'll release it, we'll clasp behind the back, push those palms down, pinch the shoulder blades together, and look up into the sky. 
This helps to open up the chest. Then once we've done all of that, it's okay to forward fold and come down into a hamstring stretch. From the hamstring stretch, you can go into something called a runner's lunge on both sides. So I'm gonna turn to my right side and I'm gonna lunge down and forward fold until I'm down on the floor. Then I'm gonna gently come out of it and walk it over to the opposite side. That's a runner's lunge. And then we're gonna come to an IT band stretch. So you're just crossing one ankle over top of the other knee and squatting down. And you can gently push the outside of that knee downwards to deepen the stretch. And same thing on the other side. Last but not least, the calves play a big, important role in running. So in order to stretch the calf muscle, you would just come to a wall, put that toe up on the wall, and lean forward until you feel a nice deep stretch in that calf muscle. And that is a good example of a cool down. Oh, I hate when this happens. All right, so we're moving on to some proven health benefits. These health benefits scientifically support everything that Girls on the Run tries to do. Some general health benefits are decreased depression and anxiety, and this is from the Journal of Sport and Exercise Psychology, which is also supported by ACSM. By the way, ACSM is American College of Sports Medicine, and it's the governing organization, or essentially the gold standard, for research in exercise physiology and body movement. So ACSM also says that cardiovascular exercise improves academic performance, which is essential to girls of this age. Regular cardiovascular exercise increases energy, prevents the onset of osteoporosis, cancer, and cardiovascular disease, and it helps to maintain a healthy body weight. Some really cool mental health benefits that I actually wasn't aware of is that ACSM says that regular cardiovascular exercise leads to a better self-perception in lower levels of depression. And the the main most shocking statistic that I found was that females can have nearly double the lifetime incidence of major depressive disorder, according to the Journal of Abnormal Psychology. This means that women experience much more depression than anyone else. And that's pretty scary. In addition to all of these health benefits, it just helps with your activities of daily living. So being able to walk walk flights of stairs without risk for cardiac event, getting around in big cities, carrying groceries from your car up the stairs into your house, and lifting and, bend and bending. It's imperative that we be able to do those things in order to sustain independent living. So again, although we're talking about the girls, I hope that you were able to take something away from this from this presentation and know that it's all about the journey. So I kind of threw a lot at you today, but it really is about celebrating the little successes that you get along the way. And so Nicole read you my favorite quote, but I thought it fitting to put it here. It's important that we be optimistic about wherever we're at in our journey, all of us, not just the girls. 
So an optimist is someone who knows that taking a step backward after taking a step forward is not a disaster. It's a cha-cha. Does anyone have any questions for me? Questions? You can unmute if you're talking, unmute yourself. No? All right. Will all this be documented someplace that we can use as a, a reference? Um, sure. I could send this to Nicole and she'll be able to uh, distribute it to all of you. Oh, I love that because it'd be hard to remember all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was excellent. Thank you very much. And I've also recorded uh, this session as well. Oh, oh wow. Great. So we can see awesome. demonstrations of the warm ups and cool downs and breathing and everything. Awesome. Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. Well, if you don't have any other questions, I'd like to thank you all for your time. Um, Thank you for being here with me this evening and allowing me to share all of this with you. And then Nicole, I'd like to thank you and the Girls on the Run home team of Northern Virginia for, again, allowing me to have this experience and be able to do this. Oh, and no. oh, I've listed my email address. Oops. I've, list, I've listed my email address here. I'd love to be a resource for some of the coaches, um, as long as Nicole and the home team are fine with that. Um, it may be that we have to direct things through her in order to get in touch with each other, but I'd love to be a resource. So thank you so much. Thank you, Daisha, and, and good question. As long as you are okay with coaches coming to you with questions, that is certainly all right with us. You're the expert for sure on this. So, so thank you so much for <laughs> not only this presentation today, but um, you know, being willing to be a resource throughout the season. As I'm sure questions will, will come up as uh, you know, coaches start to work with their teams. Absolutely. Great. Well, last call for questions. All right. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Daisha. And thank you um, to all the coaches for joining us today. We really appreciate it. So thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.